painters! <laughs> we are going to paint... <gasps> Monster Apocalypse. You can also say, welcome to Painting no. Happy Little Minis. No, just hello painters, on, here we are. It's on the screen, just, just there. <laughs> I was leaving words for you, Dave. I'm Dave, and this is Gretchen. <laughs> and one day, we'll have amazing intros and outros. But today... Every day. Yeah. Today, yeah, today every day. is not that day. <laughs> like, like, every day. We're not here every day, Dave. Every day. Every, every day, day we, we do. We just don't show them. Yep. We come in here, we practice. I don't even film them. <laughs> Just in the mirror. In the mirror. You're just psyching yourself up. Yeah. Hello, painters. Welcome to painting happy little minis. It's my life. <laughs> if you, if it's you exactly say what I do. <laughs> painting happy little minis three times in a mirror. Does any? Josh Potter appears. Yeah. <laughs> yep, he does. <laughs> so we should say hi to Dave Hummel. Uh, yay! So he's here from the start of the show this time. He was a little bit Ooh. late last time. Good work, Dave. Uh, we've got Jason here. Hello, hello. Uh, hey JT. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Wait, are you say that you were, you have appeared, Dave? Because we said painting happy little minis into a mirror three times. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. You get what you get. Well, maybe maybe the slender man that appears is uh, <laughs> made of paintbrushes. That's why he's slender. That's what it is. I tried to think of like the scary movie thing where it's like they're dragging like a knife along the wall or whatever, but with paintbrushes, it's just not the same effect. It doesn't. It doesn't. It's Doesn't not make scary like a noise. Noise. <laughs> or you know, instead of a, like a streak of blood, it's, it's like, just Vallejo. It, yeah, it's just just like which is red. coincidentally what actually I I pulled the wrong paints today. Um, no, but, pulled, no, pulled, oh, they are. Never the mind. Paints. They are. You can use all of them. I can use all of them. I didn't read. I've lost the ability. <laughs> it may seem like we're drunk. It's just because it's not. late at night. <laughs> um, but yeah, coincidentally, also today, sponsored by Vallejo. So everything is Vallejo paints. <laughs> Including all the ones I pre-chose because I was being responsible. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. And then immediately forgot that I had chosen Vallejo paints. Yep. I just pulled out like a, a, an assortment of them because I wasn't sure at the time as I was pulling them out as to what we were going to be painting. Oh, I, mean, I knew it was Monster Apocalypse, but I didn't know which one. That's which fair. As painting. soon as you saw the dinosaur um, mashup chimera creature, I don't... Dragon kaiju thing? Pterosaurus. Pterosaurus. Oh, ah, hey, here's its card. I was looking at the box, but that's <laughs> not where that information was. As soon as you saw the Pterosaurus monster, you... I feel like you should have known, just instinctively. Well, it was also tough because the other option was Sergeant Titanica, <laughs> which could also have been Sergeant Gretchen. It could have or been. Or Gretchen Titanica. We could I have could gone. have been tall for once. We could have gone for that. But uh, yeah, so that's what we're painting. So I'm painting up uh, Sergeant Titanica. Gretchen is working on Terra, uh, what is it? It is, um, yes, it's a Pterosaurus. Tyrannix, Pterosaurus monster. Excellent. So, we're very excited. We've been waiting a long time to be able to paint some monster apocalypse. Yay! Do, 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 do. So, very cool. Oh no. <laughs> JT said they dragged Kalinsky sable brushes across the floor, ruining the bristles. That would be terrible. That's, that's, that is a horror story right there. But uh, also, howdy, Roger. Good to see you. And Dave, spilt non oil is, is kind of part of the course. It's, it's not really, it's not even dramatic anymore. <laughs> I guess it's just reality TV. Is that not what this has been the whole time? Well, I don't know. Does this count as <laughs> I've been reality making, TV? I've been making some like, of it. We're up. here, live. I feel like that counts as reality TV. Yeah. Certainly not scripted <laughs> in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> but yes. Scripts. Who needs scripts? We uh, say words just fine. All of them. So all good. Of the words. All the time. This is true. So you decided you're going to go with a crazy, wild uh, yeah, sort of I, 90s? 
I kind of look. Kinda was inspired by all my old dinosaur toys from back in the 90s and I really kind of want to do a very like I want the term radical to come to mind when you look at him. As in radical. Yeah, just, just with the gravelly voice. Radical. Radical. Like, I want you to look at him and be like, that dinosaur would drink Surge. <laughs> um, oh my goodness. <laughs> surge on a skateboard. <laughs> um, okay. That's kind of what I want to go for. Um, Let's see if we get that, that feeling yeah. at the end. But, <laughs> <laughs> well, and also vaguely inspired by a lot of the old... Um, Jurassic Park toys that they used to have were right. dinosaur mashups, and they would be really brightly colored, like bright, bright green and orange. Yep, and purple yep. and everything else, Excellent. all the colors. So I'm gonna do base coat of green, and then I'm gonna see uh, exactly what I want to do. Probably do some orange stuff going on those uh, horns and spikes. Okay. Uh. Question. Cool. First question. <gasps> Are those actual clear bases or just something you glued them down onto to act as a base? Leona, is there an answer? <laughs> yes. And Dave. Dave knows the answer, too. <laughs> they yes, the, these are the original. Are, these are the original. These are the actual clear bases yep. that, uh, mm -hmm. that come in the box set. Uh, basically because it's um, the game it's is a played cityscape. on a, a yeah. mat. Um which can either be like a folded paper mat that came in like the original or in any of the starter sets or um, like a neoprene mat, kind of like one of these. But, it can be somebody um, brought out that have like cityscapes on them and you have buildings that you put in different places that and so on. That is really, really cool. But having the, by having the clear base, when you put it on the, on the ground, you can, it looks like they're walking over the, the cityscape. Rather than having, having to create a base for each one. Yeah, but it gives a nice um, feel to it, no matter the landscape. Yep. So it connects, sort of connects immediately with it. Mind you, you don't have to go with the clear bases. You can create your own bases too. And uh, Ayumi, isn't it? Yep. Has done uh, in the Penny Happy Little Minis group has done some fantastic base work for um, their Monpok minis. So definitely very, very cool. But yeah, we decided to to go with these. It's going to be make it a little bit easier for us handling the models. But as you can see, uh, Leona primed them all <laughs> for us before we glued them to the base. So. Pre-primed and ready to go. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> was, uh, I'm not a master when it comes to understanding what steps I should take. <laughs> <laughs> really what I should have done in retrospect. What was that? I should have messaged you, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> I should have taken a picture and messaged you. Oh my goodness. Some key subbed for five months. Oh wow! Thank you. Oh wow! Cool. Thank you, some key. Thank you. Cool. Uh, actually, we should also say hi to Lucafio uh, and to Josh and, uh, and I guess some key. <laughs> some key hasn't said hi yet. <laughs> Zenithal Prime. Is that white? Uh. Yeah, basically a zenithal prime is um, sort of priming, you sort of prime in black or gray and then hit it from above with white. Gotcha. So that, uh, and the word zenithal comes from the light being at the zenith, the top, oh, the highest point gotcha. above the, the mini. Yeah, somehow but. he doesn't. <laughs> Some case says I did say hi. It was the sub notification in Twitch. All right, fantastic. Sorry. <laughs> we don't see them directly on uh, on our. I need more sing points. Restream chat. <laughs> also, but. hi, tabletop hi. Santa. 
Oh, hey, Table sa- Top Santa. I wonder who Table Top Santa hey, is. I know, strange. Right. Weird. <laughs> weird guy. Sounds weird, familiar, weird, though. Weird. Like, you might have, you know, been here at a some jingle? point. Like a Just very, like a... I, th- I think we... Um, like a I th- presence. I think we skinned him to create the backdrops. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Santa Claus. <laughs> <laughs> Facebook Excellent. user says they missed us uh, back in the studio. Yep. Facebook user, you yes, I'm see gonna. Your name. I'm gonna get the link for you. Yep. Give me a second. The owner will give you the link, and we'll be able to see your name. But yes, very cool. But yes, Tap Top Santa, of course, is Rick. Woohoo! <laughs> he says I'm the ghost in the machine these days. Oh, cool. Hey, Betsy. Very cool to see you all. So, um, I know that we, there was a brief mention of it, Leona, at some point when you said we're doing Monpoc figures, but you said that we might be doing these over a couple of weeks. Yep. Is that right? So that's kind of what I thought is that we've got, I've got two weeks to paint Sergeant Titanica here. Yes. Okay, cool. Ooh, we don't have to rush. We don't no. have to rush. I was I thinking that. because of the size of them. Yeah. That it might be nice to spend that time. It, it is kind of funny, though, that, like, the, sorry, the studio paint job, let me get it to the right spot. There we go. The studio paint job is very, um, it's kind of very straightforward. It's like skin and green fatigues. Yeah, jaws are hair. up. So, um, yeah, I'll be able to spend a little bit more time on all of those surfaces and add some texture into the, um, to her uniform and, uh, and actually paint that sort of radio antenna with the, or the lighthouse or whatever it might happen to be with the red and, uh, white. So that'll be fun. Excellent. Yeah. I think I might do some really fun pattering. Patterning. Patterning. A patternering. How good are we with words? The bestest. We're That's the bestest right. with the words. Um all good. <laughs> on these kind of um not scales, plates. Right? Yep. Yeah. That would be I think that'll end up looking really nice. Cool. Um, so I'll get this base green down, and then I'll get that orange going on there, and I think that'll look great. Nice. That's cool. So now you know what we're painting. What have you guys been painting at home? What are you working on at the moment? What have you oh, I on the table or the queue? Or you forgot? Did we want to talk about the mini that Gretchen finished? Oh, oh yeah. Right. We I do have a little <laughs> pan. Oh. <laughs> Excellent. We hi, Thomas. Oh, sorry. Just quickly. I was going to say, we, we do have that many here. Yep. Hi, Thomas. Hi, Sean. Hi, Gary. <laughs> Jason said she needs a Hawaiian pattern for her camo fatigues. I th- well, you do have the time. I don't, have a, don't know if I have the time for a Hawaiian pattern, but... Yeah. Mm. Okay. Maybe I can get everything else done and then leave her shirt for the last how's that sound all right do that yep check it out there we go there he be in all his glory Mm. and you can't tell but there is glitter on him dave can tell i can tell but the easiest way to this is the manual spinner The camera doesn't pick up the glitter, but um, when this bad boy goes to his new home... Oh, there's glitter. There's glitter. Where's, where's this one going? I promised glitter, and I deliver. Who, who's got this one? Josh Potter. Josh, Josh. Potter. Okay, Josh. So, Josh, we, we have the base for you. We do yeah. have the base. It's all attached now. The base also has glitter. It was going to have more glitter, but I could not, in fact, find my pot of glitter to add even more or there would have, they're just, you just would have opened up the box. And just, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, I wonder how much we'll shed. Um, I don't oh, know. I, I, it hasn't shed oh, as much as I was expecting. Right. Um, yeah, I think good. we have sealant here that we were discussing, kind of giving him a little dousing of. Right. 
um, just to try to keep yeah. everything to stay put. But I, I didn't use exorbitant exorbitant amount. Exorbitant. You haven't used those too much. Words. She hasn't used too yeah, much. Yeah, those words that I sure do say well. Um, but yeah, I just kind of seasoned him uh, with a yep. little bit. Um, you did it like salt bait style, right? I did, did yeah, like just like that. Sprinkle it, glue it down there. Yeah. Yeah, nice. <laughs> See, my yeah. cat kept trying to eat him. You might find cat hair trapped in some of that paint. I'm not going to lie. I <laughs> I hope you're not allergic. Because <laughs> um, big Fantastic. cat... Big Cat really, really, really has been invested in just eating this miniature. None of the other miniatures have ever made the cat try to eat yep. them. But this, I mean, he jumped up on the counter. Um, he taught himself how to jump up on the counter to try to steal him. Nice. Um, <laughs> <laughs> wasn't Gretchen a teacher in the early days of the before times? I was. Yep. I did that. I helped kids learn how to read. But I also did that during the day, um, <laughs> and I'm, I'm not a night owl. <laughs> <laughs> we might need to scroll back up a little bit so we can. I think we've missed some of the uh, things that people are working on. Oh. But um, I can tell you. Okay. Or I can tell the chat. <laughs> so where should we start? Oh no. All right. Tabletop Santa says I've been. Painting some cyberpunk minis, the cool. upcoming Wave 16 WizKids minis, and Parabellum Conquest. Cool. J Con Gary was Ooh. building some cars for Gaslands. Excellent. JT working on my Nemesis board game minis. Got more Death Guard to work now for another commission. Excellent. Um, does this mean Dave can give tips and tricks during the next two weeks? Yes. It does. Like turning a cotton ball into a fire effect? Yeah. I think. <laughs> I gave tips and tricks. I think that it. was Gretchen. I was going to say, Gretchen definitely did that. <laughs> yeah. But Dave can give the same tip. <laughs> <laughs> Dave sure can thing. do it with not cotton, because uh, what we learned was that cotton worked for certain bits, but uh, what was it that we decided on that was better? Like the stuffing, wasn't oh, it? Oh, yeah. yeah. Yep. Um, um, Betsy is working on My Little Scythe now, trying to get them done before wave two of Horizon Zero Dawn. Cool. Excellent. Cool, cool, cool. It was full of catastrophe. Okay. Yeah. We like it. It's good <laughs> stuff. Uh, Dave H is ugh, is working on a Forge World Death. Deathwind Drop Pod. Wind drop Pod. Very cool. One of two. Another friend from Facebook has a Brain Stealer Dragon. Oh. Ooh. That sounds interesting. I haven't. I've heard of a brain steal a dragon before. Sounds like a formidable opponent. And Gray has a box of shame to randomly pick. <laughs> and the next one is now some snow centipede thing. Oh, that sounds name. very fun. What's the snow centipede? <sighs> I know what it is. Oh, uh, but it's like a. It's like it's not a remor. It's like a remorax, something like that. Oh, mind flare dragon. Mm. Well, but, oh, yeah. I wonder if Remoras. It's, it's a there Remora. we go. I was gonna say. Remoras. I was gonna say Rick knows what it is. Remoras. 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 Cool. Okay. There we go. So I've got all of the base colors down for her. Um, for skin, her skin. I've got um, for this uh, Caucasian skin. I'm using the my favorite sort of Caucasian skin base, which is the tan from the game color range. Uh, but what I've done is I've mixed in a little bit of and this will come as a surprise to nobody. Charred brown. Whoa. So that's the charred brown there. And when I say a little bit, I mean just a little bit. For the uh, to get a nice sort of smooth base coat, so I've got that down over all of it f first. Um, 
So there's basically like one and a half layers of the that base coat, and then you can come along and highlight strip the tan. Um, I'm using the a larger brush for the these larger areas here, and I think as I into more highlights with the um, on the flesh, well, um, I'll probably stick with this larger brush. Might switch to the smaller brush for uh, her face. It's got a few more details, but um, for the moment, this will give me some nice um, smooth areas. Very nice. Because I don't really want a lot of brush strokes on there. I'm just slapping down this green. Oh my goodness. So that, green. That green is vibrant. Is that the jade green? That is foul green. Foul green. Foul. Foul. Yeah, and I have some very um, limey kind of greens that I'll eventually work into there as well. But I'm going to, uh, once I get this down, I'm going to focus on those plates. Um, and I have some lovely oranges and yellows. And I think I am going to do some kind of spots and um, just very kind of take inspiration from many, many a lizard I've seen. Okay. Um, <laughs> um, Tabletop Santa says, will any of you be at Gen Con Origins or PAX? Uh, I think I'm aiming for PAX. Just Ooh. to go for a day. Do my usual. Stumble around. Say hi to folks. Pick up some card games for the kids. Nice. That's a good one. As, like, game train media, we will not be there. No. No. Sadly. Not this year. I just noticed she had a little, um... A little bit of excess resin or metal on her, um... Excess metal on her leg. Oh, sorry. Oh, that's good. You're fine. Initially, I was like, ah, I can, I can let that go. <laughs> and then I decided I couldn't. I probably could have painted it as like a, um, like a little thread coming down from a, her shorts, but it would take too long to just trim Clean that it up. up. All good. We've got the time to do it. See. Were you able to figure that, figure out that arm? Wow, you got hmm? it. Good job, Got the one. <laughs> <laughs> I was having some trouble gluing that one arm on, but Dave got it, so. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. I was okay. Really having a lot of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't stress, Leona. It's Basically, all good. Basically, I sat there for like 20 minutes. Yeah. Just holding, holding it, and it still didn't there, work. There are definitely times when assembling minis... I they, don't understand. It's just, it's a, you go, I, I don't get it. Where's this supposed to go? Or how's this supposed to connect? But, um, yeah. All good. I'm like, I am the worst at putting things together. I, I mean, it gets, it'll get done. Whether it's a mini or Ikea furniture, it'll, it'll get done. But at what cost? <laughs> right. And with what pieces <laughs> remaining? Right. I... <laughs> <laughs> All good. Okay. Now I'm mixing a little bit of uh, it is light flesh. There we go. Into the um, the tan to start highlighting. It's probably about two or three parts tan to one part light flesh. I think it's got like a large area. I can do quite a few layers to build up um, those highlights. Get in all the nooks and crannies down with this foul green. Okay. So I can at least have that out of the way and done. Sorry, I just, just noticed <laughs> above uh, Rick's question. <laughs> Some said the more as the better. <laughs> Excellent. Um, 
super duper foul green. I feel like that's a color that someone has spilled on an earlier episode back I in the days. I have no idea what you're talking about. It, it, well, it wasn't foul green. <laughs> Do you remember? Because I haven't owned foul green. And it was one of my pots of paint that Gretchen spilled. So it's still a little one. bit of a grudge there. <laughs> Excellent. I, I uh, think I've traumatized Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite. Uh, the copy says Army Painter has new flesh tones coming out in September, so they won't have to use as much uh, use so much charred brown. Wash your mouth out. I will always use charred brown. Always. Uh, Sean is going to Gen Con. Very cool. Thomas, uh, hopefully we'll see you at PAX. Yep, that would be cool. Um, which uh, who will you be there with again, with again, Thomas? I can't remember the name of the group. Thomas pu published the. Uh, Necro nom nom nom. Nom 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 Cookbook. So very cool. Um, Rick says, Sean, find me at Gen Con. Doing a bunch of stuff there. Very cool. Um, <laughs> Jason said, Manufacturer is intentionally giving you extra hardware just to confuse and freak us out when we finish and there are pieces left over. I assembled two chairs recently. Oh. And I started the first chair I was assembling. I used a packet of a packet of the screws that were there, and I thought they were the ones for for that. But some of them weren't quite long enough. No. I was like, "What's going on with this? And do I have to like? How do I have to finagle this to get it to work?" And then uh, my wife suggested that perhaps those were the screws for the like the side table that went with the two chairs. And she was right, of course. <laughs> But yeah, it's exactly that. Uh, hey, James. Glad you could join us. And uh, somebody said, do you call foul? Green? <laughs> Something like that. All good. But uh, yeah. Yeah, having these larger areas means that I can spend a little bit more time building them up, which is going to be cool. There we go. Little tiny crevices everywhere. Yep. And also, I'll be able to work with, uh, because there'll be more highlight layers, so it's like a smoother, hopefully smoother transition. I'll be able to leave some of the, the darker shadows down sort of underneath the legs there. Rather than feeling that I need to sort of get them all painted. It says he going in and painting some of the shadows. <laughs> but I think oh. that'll be fine. All fine when it's done. James, okay. I hate clear bases. <laughs> I, you know what? I don't think I dislike them. I think the only thing that I feel that I might end up disliking is that there's no opportunity to clean up and correct anything that I paint on the base by accident. Right. Um. So that is less cool. But if I don't mess any of that up, uh, and dirty up the base, which I think I already have tons of little paint splatters on there <laughs> <laughs> now that I look at it. <laughs> um, but I, I think that it, it would look, um, it would look fine. Yeah. Um, and kind of interesting and cool. I'd almost also feel like it would be cool to paint on the underside of it showing up okay. like, um, like a cell painting right. that you'd see in animation. That could be neat. That could be cool. Uh, I could be wrong. Is, here's a question. Uh, starting with such a vivid green, will you be highlighting with something even brighter, or using a wash to tone it down since you have the extra time? So for the skin of this lovely dino creature, I have two very bright lime greens that I feel are going to kind of bring that up to that um, very, like, radical uh <laughs> color radical. scheme that um that i'm invested in currently um 
but I do also have um, ultramarine blue to go and get some of those shadows because I think those really nice cool shadows are gonna pop phenomenally with the brighter greens and all of the horns and the plates which I'm about to get to are gonna be this kind of goldenrod yellow with some speckles and patterns and whatnot um, in this very red orange and orange um, so I think those will look very nice and contrasty yep and they're opposite on the color wheel and I think that'll be fun um, I think it'll be great yeah I think it'll end up looking very um, very red tubular even <laughs> Um, <laughs> not, not tubular. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Excellent. But That's cool. Yeah. See you, Rick. Hmm? Rick is leaving. Oh, bye, Rick. Ha ha. Ayumi is here. Marble painter. Yeah. Mon Park, yay! Exactly. We're very excited. Actually, I'm glad you could join us. It's a very sheer yellow, so I'm going to add a bit of orange first, and then I'm going to yep. go in with yellow. Yeah. Color description sounds very Dinotopia-ish. Dinotopia was my jam! <laughs> um, anything dinosaur was really my jam growing up. Yep. I saw some of uh, Jurassic Park 3 the other day. Did you? Apparently that's the best of the Jurassic Parks. Um, is, that, is that not not correct? The one with the fever dream um, velociraptor? Yeah. It's just like, Alan! Alan, wake up! I have... Yeah, that one. That I, one. Have <laughs> I have fan art of that velociraptor <laughs> saying Alan in my office. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> I'm actually, I, I like, I don't think the Jurassic Park 3 um, out of the Jurassic Park series is that, is that bad. I think the yeah. second movie gets a horrible rap and um, the only pe reason people dislike it instinctively is because of the whole like Godzilla-esque dinosaur loose in San Francisco kind of vibe. Right. Um, I think people just instinctively are like, I don't like that. And so they discredit the entire film. Okay. Um, when I think that the film in its entirety isn't bad at all. Um, right. The third film, I think, is the most fun in terms of like building this kind of world with more of the islands getting involved and seeing how deep everything kind of went because there are comic books and video games that explore more of that lore okay um so i thought that was really interesting also the third jurassic park film is the only one where the dinosaurs have primitive feathering okay um so are they the ones that um that chase them through the the Velociraptors have the primitive feathering okay. in that one, yeah. Um, and that island specifically was the island where they were breeding um, new versions of the dinosaurs and then kind of letting them, in almost nature preserve way, yep. um, kind of grow up. So they were juveniles that were bred on the island and then they, they were raised there before they would be moved to the other parks as attractions because okay. um, all of the different I think there's like five islands in total but they all had different uh, different things that they did for the parks okay. um, yeah don't um, don't quiz me on Star Wars lore but I am <laughs> Jurassic Park that is <laughs> see so, yeah, I, I thought the island in, in three was the same island as in one and that there was just the one island. That they're all on the one island. Nope, nope, nope. Because in Jurassic Park 3, he even says, this isn't the island I was on. And they're like, how many dinosaur islands are there? And the answer is five. 
<laughs> so when you're at um... <laughs> so when you're at trivia night and they're like, how many dinosaur islands are there in, uh, in Jurassic yep. Park? You can just think back to this moment and have me just appear behind you like Mufasa going five. <laughs> The five Excellent. deaths. See, Dave understands. He gets it. He remembers. Yep. Excellent. <laughs> Very cool. Uh, so he says the best Jurassic Park film is Tammy and the T-Rex. <laughs> he says the first film was awesome. T-Rex ate a lawyer. Oh, JT. Don't say that out too loud around Gretchen. She will fight you. <laughs> All Jurassic Park sequels were and are unnecessary. Uh, I disagree. But I do have to say that, like, they're not really founded on the book anymore. Like, right. Um, I have opinions about the Jurassic World series, but those, those are separate. Like. <laughs> nice the books and kind of seeing what they cherry picked from from what book and uh how they applied it to what movie wait there are multiple books there's two books oh wow yeah i thought it was just the one nope there's two books um the first book uh is ends much differently <laughs> and the characters are kind of portrayed differently um, and the second book, um, has some of the flavorings that you see in the second movie. Okay. Um, but you can really tell with the books that they kind of took the best parts of the, the two books okay. and combined them together to make the first film. Right. And so they were just and left so with the not the best parts. For the second movie. Like okay. And I think it made me appreciate the second movie a lot more because I actually like the second book more than I like the first book. Okay. Um, I think that it finds its voice and its flow a lot more. Um, right. Don't like the ending at all, but mm. I love every part of it up till that. Um, okay. But I feel like the, um, the second movie made do with what was left and kind of, uh, and what they didn't steal for the first film. Right. If that makes sense. Okay. Um, but I think they should have, I think they should have added more of, um, Sarah Harding as she appeared in the book. Cause she was a much more badass character in the book. Okay. Who played Sarah Harding in the movies? Uh, Sarah Harding was played by, Oh, I've lost her name. She's been in so many things, too. Was um, she the... The red-headed woman. Oh. Uh, she was the... Mm. Photo she's... Oh, goodness. In the second film? Yeah, in the second right. film. She okay. she's had red hair in it. In the books, she has short black hair. Oh, Julianne Moore. Yes! Okay. That's her name. Julianne Moore. I'm saying it for the chat. Because <laughs> I was right. muted. Cool. Um, but she's a lot more passive in the um, in the second film, whereas in the books she's a lot more um, aggressive and kind of um, ready to take on all the dinosaurs. Okay, there's this article that I just found called yep. Jurassic Park 2's Sarah Harding is the most is the series' most underrated character. She is! In, <laughs> she really, really is. It's like what you're saying. It, it, it really is. In, in the books, she is such an amazingly written character. And it's like a, a, a strong, powerful, feminist character. Like just a role model character. Amazing. <laughs> and then she gets watered down so much and it's crazy because like in the movies you have ian malcolm jeff goldblum's character being like i'm gonna be the leader i'm gonna be an action hero i'm in charge but in the books he's suffering like severe ptsd from almost getting eaten by a t-rex and his leg is not fully recovered and right. he's just like i hate everything about this adventure and i don't want to be here also i broke my nda and now everyone is out to get me um <laughs> and sarah harding is the one who's like we're gonna get off this island and it's gonna be fine Here's a shotgun. 
don't ask where I got it. <laughs> um, so, like, I, I don't know. I have, I have opinions. They're not all bad. They're not all good. They're just opinions. Excellent. Uh, I feel like people take critiques much too much too hard and either critique something to the point of where you're confused if they even love it anymore or they're like, you can't critique this at all because I love it so much. And I am neither. I'm just a right. person with silly voices who really likes dinosaurs. <laughs> with <And> silly voices. <laughs> okay. That's all I have to offer. <laughs> How's that looking? Uh, it looks a little bit looking a little bit two dimensional there, so might need to do a little bit more work around the I like that, but highlights are coming along. Hmm? Oh, sorry. Yeah. So I've got to blend those together a bit more. I think her face is looking pretty good. The under the lights, it's a little bit more stark than it is in real life, but that's fine. Her lights are very bright. They are. Because it makes us look nice. Mm. Makes me look like me. <laughs> I'm not sure that'd be nice, but anyway. Oops. I'm gonna do that. But uh, something I do have to mention this week Ooh. is I found out that um, Black Summer, mm -hmm. which is a Canadian um, zombie show um the second season released recently on netflix i say recently i'm not sure exactly how long ago it released but i only found it just the other day and i really enjoyed the first season um so i ended up binging the the second season over two nights and it was yeah, really it came, it came out on the 17th 17th of june Yep. Okay. So yeah, pretty quickly then. The twenty second and the twenty third yeah. of the evening I watched. I caught it. that. <laughs> Excellent. No, twenty first and twenty second. But uh, yeah, if folks like their um, their zombies and they don't mind Canadians, definitely I mean, worth checking out. You had me at zombies, but I got to draw the line at Canadians. <laughs> <laughs> the um, the great thing is though it, that there's no like, at no point does anybody go, I'm Canadian, or this is Canada. You're just supposed to know? You just, well, you, not, it doesn't matter, right? It doesn't matter at all. It's the zombie apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> I care. So. I want to know where I'm at in the zombie apocalypse. Got to know my resources, Dave. Yeah. <laughs> but it was just, uh, it was also, it was really well done because each episode would start with a, it'd start with, hmm? <laughs> Brains, eh? <laughs> Excellent. And uh, each episode would start at the front of a Tim Hortons. That's amazing. <laughs> no, just, just kidding. Of course, I wouldn't. That would be that would be very definitely putting you in Canada. But uh, no, each ep episode would start with a scene, and then it would kind of jump back. Like it would basically work its way backwards in time. They'd like jump back to a scene that happened before the first scene. Okay. And then jump back to a scene that led... Basically, so you get got to find out all the things that led to that that first scene that you watched. So it was really a very interesting way to sort of put it all together. I just out. think of, like, zombie apocalypse letter Kenny. <laughs> no, it was not that. <laughs> it's really well done. Really well done. And not, um, not at all humorous. Oh, okay. It's very, it's very serious. <laughs> fair. So, have you seen Train to Busan? Yeah. Is yep. it like that? Um. Like serious wise? I don't know. I thought that one was pretty serious. I think Train, I, I always think of Train to Busan has a little bit of, has some humor in there. It does have like a tongue in cheek. It's got a little bit of slapstick in it. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is very much not slapstick. Oh, this is, uh, okay. It's very serious and um, 
but yeah, it's just really well done. So in a half hour episode, you might get um, sort of like five or six little scenes in the way they're stitched together. But gotcha. It was really nicely done. Saying. There we go. I think she's. Uh, might leave it at that for the for the skin. Possibly come back to it. Once we get to some other stages, but now I'm going to work on those shorts so that I've got time in the time between now and next week to research Hawaiian shirts. <laughs> was that Jason who suggested that? I think it was. But uh, Jason, oh, Jason Sutton says um, the availability of firearms and ammo is needed. Uh, needed information for the zombie apocalypse. Yep. Well, being um, that they are in, uh, that they're in Canada, they do have access to quite a lot of firearms. Yeah, don't need to reload a sword. Just saying. Yeah. Well, the the, the the thing is, in this one, the zombies are fast zombies. Oh, I don't like the fast zombies. I mean, they you still can only go as fast as like rabbit people can go. Yeah. But the um, the difference between like being able to stand there and, and shoot a zombie in the head if they're shambling towards you walking dead style or if they're running at you um, black summer style it's kind of different and so it it does change up the options that the characters have as they're being attacked but yeah so there's still there's still a lot more of a threat I guess than they are in, um, like, by now, like, by when we're about to start season 11 of The Walking Dead, pretty much everybody who's still alive doesn't really treat zombies as... That's a threat. It's more like, oh, i got to go mow, <laughs> I gotta go mow the grass today, kind of thing. <laughs> got to clear out those zombies. Um, whereas the zombies in Black Summer are, are very definitely... Definitely a threat. Is the music good um, in the show? That's important for a zombie film. Yeah, I, I must admit, I, I, I didn't okay. listen to it and go, oh, that music's great. Well, the score is great. Um, it didn't certainly didn't detract from it at all. Um, but the fun part about this one, so the first one, Black Summer, was kind of set during the the outbreak okay. of it and this is like four months later so it's more like white winter kind of thing oh. yeah. but um unlike so there's a great there's a great piece in uh like world war z the book not the not the movie where um max brooks talks about how like during winter the um, the zombies would freeze in place, and so people, a lot of people sort of fled north to Canada. So there was only a, there was a line. The zombies wouldn't go any further, couldn't get any further north. Oh, interesting. So, but in in this one, because they move, <laughs> they move fast. It's it's not not the same, but it is good. But uh, what else have we got? Oh, James James Denkoff says that he's listening to Shogun, the fifty-hour-long version. Hmm. So that's a very long one. Yeah, that's one that I have not picked up yet. Shogun. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, um, I think I. I'm pretty sure I read it, like when I was, like, probably seventeen or eighteen. But that was a long time and a lot of beers ago. <laughs> Macavio says it always takes the zombie apocalypse to find out who really likes you and who you want to trip and fall <laughs> you say it takes a zombie apocalypse but <laughs> if, you, if you spend enough time thinking about it just takes one long car ride <laughs> fast zombies never eat wait that's fasting zombies oh awesome. <laughs> uh or which which movie invented this track star zombie? I don't know. Where is the zombie film music? Uh, film music done by the Cranberries. 
I'm pretty sure there has there has to have been a At scene least in one. like it's got to be in Zombie Land Two or something like that with that song playing. <laughs> Look up here. It says fast zombies are former millennials because they're always in such a rush. Yep, they've humbled 28 days later, I think, for the fast zombies. Yeah, 28 days later definitely did it more as like a, a rabies kind of outbreak than a... Than a coming back from the dead? Yeah, because yep. it was... Um, they had them dying of like hunger and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yep. Definitely, yeah, it was definitely a... The transmissible... By blood kind of thing. Lots of coughing in that film. Lots of coughing. But uh, yeah, that was a great one for the fast zombies. But no, definitely, uh, definitely good. If you have Netflix, check it out. If you have Netflix and like zombie stuff. Not gonna lie, zombies aren't my favorite. No? But the way that you're describing the show so sounds interesting to me. So. Yeah, the. Um, I will try it. <laughs> even if you just watch, like, watch an episode, you like pick a random episode and, um, and watch it for the storytelling, the way the right. storytelling is done. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely like when stories care about that <laughs> while yeah. also creating a world yeah and sometimes those Netflix's um, originals can be a little miss so it's always nice to have a little recommendation right before you jump in yeah yep. there's a lot of stuff on Netflix for sure I go for those. Um, somebody said, I think it was Night of the Living Dead. Oh, it was a Vigny Rames movie, I think. They were trapped in a mall. That was the... Um, that had the song. Oh, that had still talking about the song? I don't know. That would be cool. Yeah, somebody says Dawn of the Dead. Yeah, that's the, the remake of Dawn of the Dead. Oh. That had um, Sarah Polly. Uh, and oh, who else was in it? Zombies got know, real popular for a while. Oh yeah. Yep. I don't know what happened culturally that just like suddenly made that a thing. <laughs> but I wonder if there's like studies about it. And I feel like we also go, go through like phases as a culture. Like it was zombies, and then it was like Twilight vampire stuff. Like lots of vampires, so many vampires, <laughs> and then. <laughs> And then, like, now I feel like we're moving back into, like, cryptid territory. Like, now I mean, the new hip thing to like is, like, Sasquatch, Mothman, Lovecraftian horror. I think, um, I think you're right. I think it is heading back towards that. Back around to that. Yeah. So we may get, a, like, a remake of Creature from the Black Lagoon. That would be cool. That'd be fun. Well, if it's done well, that'd be great. Del Toro would do it right. I was gonna say. It reminds me of that, oh, that random one that came out. What was that called? Which one? Was it just called Creature? It was a Del Toro movie. Okay. And it was with Guillermo the del Toro or Benicio del Toro? Oh, Guillermo. <laughs> right. <laughs> One of those would be visually incredibly interesting and you're not entirely sure what's going on. And the other one was like not as visually interesting and you can't understand what's going on because you can't, because he's, he's doing one of his voices. <laughs> I think that'd be good. Oh yeah, I forgot that Lovecraft country was literally our show. Right. Yep. 
Definitely go. I said circle of life stuff. This happened before and will happen again. So Sumki has a good point. Creature was supposed to be part of the modern universal monster universe. Okay. And wasn't the new mummy? Yeah, the new that? mummy was also supposed to be. But unfortunately, that series like didn't do very well. Like they just stopped, which was a little sad. Cause like I felt like if they kept going, they could have made a good movie. <laughs> right. <laughs> Probably. Yeah, the mummy killed it, and so did the Invisible Man. That's. It did make a, me a little sad because I liked what they were doing. That's fair. Right. I didn't really like the mummy movie. <laughs> it was a pretty bad movie. Is this the um the? It was the re. The Tom Cruise. Yes. Remake. Yeah. Yes. I gotta admit, I like. I really enjoy like patterns and spotting patterns and hearing about patterns and that sort of thing. But I I. I did not connect the Invisible Man, the Mummy, and Creature as a group of films. Well, yeah, it was weird. They didn't really, like, market them together. Right. But there were characters that were all similar. Like, they had a couple characters that were in all three of the movies or something. I forget exactly. Okay. And they, like, had lines that, like, talked about these other monsters. They were like, oh, right, okay. there's something else going on here. But then it never led to anything. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> That's, they should have, yeah. I feel like if they made it a little bit more, like, in your face, kind of like how um, the superhero movies are just like, these movies are connected. By the way, you should watch the other ones. <laughs> Because they connect. They should have just made it some big X Files special, and oh. <laughs> just connected them all that way. Yeah, that would have been good. Yeah, that would have been good. Monster of the week. Cool. Okay. Oh, yeah. They introduced Dr. Jekyll in the movie. And he was supposed to be the connection. That's exactly what it was. Okay. Jekyll was, was the in the Mummy movie. And I think he was in one of the other ones, too. Okay. You know, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen already kind of, like, <laughs> brought us yep. there. Yeah. Which I stand by the fact that League of Extraordinary Gentlemen could have been amazing <laughs> if it, not that it wasn't already like fantastic, but if they would have done it as a TV series, they would have had oh, enough okay. time yeah. to explore all the different plot things going on in a way that wrapped everything up a little bit less messy. Yeah. And I think that would have given more build up to the introduction of all of the characters more yeah. and kind of um let everyone have a little bit more fun. Well I'm gonna I'm gonna say something that's gonna that might sound weird, but it wasn't until like quite a bit after the um uh I'll turn and point it there while I'm talking. Um quite a bit after the writers strike, the Hollywood writers strike of 2006 mm -hmm. that the like it became acceptable to change the format of a tv series kind of thing <laughs> prior to that it was like 22 to 26 oh, episodes right. a year yeah, like yeah. for every season there were that like you, you can go back and look and like that's the point where after after that there are so many things that where the story is told in the correct number of episodes kind of thing it's like it isn't strung out over too long or um yeah it's it's, it's around it's right around that kind of kind of thing that's when uh like lost had to switch up how they were gonna yeah. present it present the seasons but uh yeah i think it's but so before anything before that, there were, the mindset was very much like, we're going to make 22 episodes or 26 episodes or whatever it happened to be. 
right? And so they would just, if anything was outside of that, it would be like, let's just make it a movie. Or yeah. like, try to go to a movie format. <laughs> yeah, basically, they were, they were the two options. <laughs> That's such a good point. 90-minute movie. I didn't think about that. 22 episodes. <laughs> yeah. The league required you to know who the people were to appreciate them. That is true, but I felt like I knew who... Part of the fun, and I, I, I think I, I, I appreciated this about Penny Dreadful as well. Part of the fun was kind of that build up to guess who those characters are, and I felt I, I wanted more of that as in Penny Dreadful as well. Right. <laughs> like I, I wanted, I wanted that kind of um, that trusting your audience amount of intelligence. You know, like. I wanted to have the clues there for me. It's something that I actually really enjoyed in the new in the Witcher series, is that they didn't spoon feed the plot to you. Is that you had to kind of Sherlock the the fact that you were going back and forth in time, and then at the end it brought it all together. And either you were yelling at the screen, "Aha!" or "Oh!" Um, so I I really appreciate that kind of. Um, that kind of build up, right? Um, and I just, I just wanted more of it in League. I wanted to, I wanted to have that that moment where I was either proven like really right, and I could have been like, ah, my English major was not for nothing. I have read the classics, and it did me right in this moment. <laughs> um, or for me to just be like, I am a failure yeah. of a student. Uh, <laughs> um, either way, there will be drinking. I like, you know, so. I I just oh, I love that so much when you're able to kind of get impassioned about um, who's the next character going to be? Is this the character I think it is? Look at these clues. Right. Um, you know, of course, like as soon as they name drop someone, that's a bit less so. But, right. <laughs> um, it's always it's interesting. Cool. That's the kind of. The kind of uh, thing a, that I like. That's the kind of show you'd like to watch? Yes. I'm going to make it. <laughs> you should. You start writing it, and then... And then put it away on my computer and have no one ever read it, right? No, no. Is that how that happens? No, no, no. As you do more and more acting, you come into contact with more and more influential directors, and uh, then you can... When they go, let me have a creature could, feature. Could you could you read my script? Let me have a creature feature. That's all. That's... That'd be good. You can do um, that. <laughs> oh yeah, let's look at some minis. <gasps> oh my goodness. Yeah. Hang on, just just quickly though. Um, yeah, go ahead. Uh, where is it? Just uh, JJ Hamgrens can't stick the landing, regardless of writers. Just my opinion. That's fair. Um, what would, would be your weapon of choice for the zombie apocalypse? Um, I'd have to go with katana. I'm so, you can't. You don't have to reload a sword. Yep. And I know where to get a lot of swords. Yeah, it's true. My house. Gretchen. Gretchen would be my weapon of the apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> I think too. Excellent. I just know enough people where I feel like if there's a zombie apocalypse, like. I feel pretty safe. Right. Like my brother was on route to go to the Olympics for archery, so I'm like, that's our that's our distance fighter, right Excellent. there. Yes. <laughs> cool. We're we're uh, we're making the party like an RPG. We got this. <laughs> um, you know. Cool. So. Okie dokie. So we are going to have a look at some minis. Uh, while you're getting you know, that ready, I'm just put that up. I've started painting um, her shorts with dark sea blue. And so I wanted to have that dark sort of green base to um, start working in the olive gray is what I'm going for, for her fatigues. So I have a bit of it, like a desaturated lower half, which should balance nicely against the um, Hawaiian shirt pattern that I eventually You sound paint. less and less enthused about that. I thought I, I was sounding more enthused. I think it's going to look really nice. <laughs> Excellent. It's going to give her personality. Like, yeah, yep. she's a sergeant, but also a person. A person. 
she likes to relax on the weekends. Yep. That's a lot by, co money. by cosplaying his <laughs> <laughs> Magnum PI. Um, That's a nice excellent. gradient. It is. It is very cool, isn't it? Mm -hmm. um, the rock. I started painting it tonight. It's a work in progress there. Um, yeah, that's very cool. I do like the, that uh, that fade on the wings. They're looking looking nice. So I'm guessing there um, with that filter in the background that um, Aaron's gone through and, and airbrushed a lot of that with. Um, that would explain the lovely gradient. Yeah, and I think he's done it with inks or like washes. So, um, so we've got that going over the uh, the white undercoat. But yeah, looking very cool, Aaron. I like how that's coming along. Oh, Ashlyn has uh, been painting up her, um, I forget the name of these war suits, but uh, for the Sisters of Battle, the Adeptus Sororitas army, and these are uh, Paragon, that is it, Paragon war suits. I knew it was stuck in there somewhere. But yeah, looking uh, looking very cool here. This, um, this model has caused quite a few conversations in, um, in my gaming group about where her, like, how her legs are set. Oh. Because, I um, say maybe she's short and they are in the knees. I was, I was suggesting that um, perhaps she was an amputee, so it made it easier oh, to, to sort of cool fit them too. in there. But, um, yeah. But Ashlyn's done a, a very nice job here. I am liking that, um, that pale blue. It's got a tinge of green to it. But uh, looking very cool and all the very neat uh, silver trim. Nice work there, Ashlyn. Good one. Oh, Chris has painted up some scout troopers. Just always Legion. I'm enjoying the camo on these. Just that that thin striping mm -hmm. um, over all of the white. It's just looking really cool. Breaks up those lines a lot. Breaks up that hu those huge areas of white. But, um, yeah, looking very cool. I always love oh. to see what people do to kind of uh, distinguish their stormtroopers. Right. Yep. I feel like it's such a subtle way to get really creative. Yep. Definitely. Definitely good. I, I also love that because they're black and white and grays um, on there, I love that uh, Chris has popped some bright green uh, flock on the base and those... Uh, Orange. I can assume they're chunks of wood. They may be rocks, but um, yeah, looking very cool. It's nice uh, to have that little pop of color in there as well. Top stuff. Squirrel girl. Squirrel girl. Excellent. Nice work, Chris. Uh, she looks great. Is this this has got to be from um, X Men United? I think. Is that it? Not X Men United. Marvel United. From, I'm just um, gonna nod. From uh, Simon. <laughs> but yeah, nice job there. I love that um, the work that you've done on her face there. I love how nice the shading stayed very comic book like with the uh, chibi nature of this mini. Yeah, yep, definitely. I think it's cool. Yeah, Chris has got some good um, kind of black lining going on there. You can see down the um, where the jacket sort of meets her um, leotard there and around the sash really helps uh, define it and keep that uh, as a comic book style yep looking good Chris nice work there we go oh, it's sideways. <laughs> Clive has sent us a sideways pit fiend <laughs> must have been really hard to paint sideways I don't know, sometimes it's easier. No, yeah. No. Always worth trying. But uh, no, this is looking uh, looking very cool. That's a, a crazy mini. I think this, is this a Reaper Bones mini? Who knows? So many needs to tell us. Oh, Whiz Kids. Kids, radio. It's a Whiz Kids. Whiz Kids mini. It's looking very cool. And I love the, um, one of the things I love about the sculpt is the, the horns coming out of the, like the, um, Collarbone, it's there, curving up and around, framing that head nicely. But uh, yeah, I think it looks really cool. That um, bright white chest, the white on the hands there. 
definitely um, give you a good mix of tones around the, the piece. But yeah, looking cool, Clive. Nice work. Oh, Jason asks if Chris Corker has done the Bad Batch yet. I don't think he has. Probably got it on his painting table at the moment. And the copy says the most powerful creature in Marvel, supposedly. She is. Squirrel Girl. She is. Yeah, she defeated, defeated are, they, Thanos. are they working on a, a film for um, Squirrel Girl? I've, did Disney Plus like have a Squirrel Girl? So um, I hear multiple things about that where it's in the works, it's not in the works, it's in the works, it's not in the works. People uh, are mad. People are sad. No one knows. Uh, <laughs> we'll just wait. We'll just wait until it comes out. Apparently, and then we'll go, yes. Hey. No. Uh, cool. Just looking at this uh, excellent orc. This is a Blood Bowl orc from uh, Dan. Um, looking very cool. I love that um, that bright sort of orange yellow on the armor plates there. So Blood Bowl is a um, an ultra violent uh, version of American football. Um, and yeah, that's all. He's ready for it. He's very definitely ready for the ultraviolet. Yeah. yeah. Looking very cool. Love the that green skin as well. Got a lot of depth to it. Nice work, Dan. Looks great. Oh, Douglas uh, painted up a bunch of uh, droids for um, Star Wars. My caption was, these are not the droids you are looking for. No, for. I don't know if I've told that story. I will come back to tell that story after we've looked at all the minis. Okay. <laughs> but, um, yeah, Doug was saying that uh, on these, he put some uh, gloss varnish on them at the end. Um, and uh, one of the comments on, I think, on the post in the group was um, they, the person liked that he'd done that because it separated it a little bit and gave it definitely gave it that shiny droid feel kind of thing more of that it's like if you um you can paint a car blue but it's not until you put the, like the little metallic fleck and the gloss coat over the top that it looks like a car painted blue otherwise it's sort of like uh, you did this at home with a spray can kind of thing so i tend to agree i think um that little bit of extra gloss is uh give it a nice pop Top stuff, Doug. Ooh. Jason uh, has been working on the WizKids Arakokra and Iron Defender. Ooh. Painted them up as Blue Falcon and Dino Mutt. So, these are looking cool. Amusingly enough, I know none of these characters. None Does of that them? That sound terrible? Yeah. Although the color scheme for the Blue Falcon does seem familiar. <laughs> so I probably have seen it at some stage in my life. But now looking very cool. I'm glad, uh, good to know the, um, that, that uh, the, the Dino Mutt there is from WizKids. I might pick that up. It's a very cool looking mini. But, uh, but yeah, Jason, you've done a, done a really nice job here. I love that your, um, your blue is desaturated, which means that that yellow, that super saturated yellow there pops beautifully from it. Really nice work there. It's been a lot of fun. And that green you've got going on there, that's very that's very Boba Fett green. I like it. Looking cool. Nice work. Oh, Craig Hogan has painted up Kragnos. This is a model that we should get for Gretchen to paint over the course <laughs> of uh, six or seven weeks. <laughs> this is a huge mini. Oh, he stands. He probably stands a bit taller than the, the my frost, frost giant. giant. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, but he actually he looks like he has less. He has more fur and less details. I feel like I would enjoy. I like painting fur. I like painting fur. I like painting hair. It's like, no. no. He's got just as much. Just much. He's got. He might have more hair. <laughs> less. A little bit less fur, but he's got just as many details, easily. But yeah, Greg's done a really nice job here. That. Um, the orange is tinged to the skin and in the the strong orange a stronger orange in the hair in the brown in the hair 
looks really cool and it's balancing really nicely against that blue on the shield yeah excellent work Greg nice one John uh, is it John or John yeah. John R. Schmidt um, it's like John R. Schmidt okay John yep. uh, painted up this myth, uh, Mythka Orc Shaman from Bombshell Miniatures just give me a second <coughs> in the show where I've talked too much um, I love all the colors in this yeah yep. it's great great mix of colors there But yeah, it looks really great. I love the pattern pattern on her skirt. It looks almost like uh, scale mail. Like, yeah. Or, um, like a quilting. Yeah. yeah. A great way to texture. <laughs> a great way to use texture to kind of make it a lot more interesting and dynamic. Lucafia says, it's been too long between brush licks for Dave. It has. It's been all of like 10 minutes. I'm not getting my hydration from the brush. <sighs> These guys are cool. Yeah. I really, really like how terrifying these guys look, but that they are in a field of flowers. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I think that is brilliant. It is. It is um, wonderful. It's like one of the things that um, so these are Nurgle models. So in the lore, that like Nurgle is the god of decay, like death and decay and that kind of thing. But also of um, there's lots of talk of like the gardens of Nurgle, where yeah. Nurgle grows all of his poxes and diseases yeah. and and that kind of thing. So there's always that balance of like utter destruction and regrowth or renewal it's just that the new stuff that's growing isn't very nice oh, okay. um it's poisonous poisonous yeah <laughs> some of the prettiest things are poisonous it will give you uh, like allergies for weeks uh, but uh, uh you mean my real my real life <laughs> yeah yeah just like that um <laughs> that must be my garden <laughs> imagine eternal pollen yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah. But no, these look really good, Josh. They look great. The guy on the left with the bagpipes mm -hmm. is called the Sloppity Mile Piper. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, nice work on those, Josh. They look really uh, disgusting and bright. Oh, Josh Potter has painted Linda and Off Archer from Reaper. Mm. Looking very cool there. I like the way that Josh has done. Um, like two different greens on the tunic. Yeah. You got the the green of the sort of the sanded cloth, and then the that um, more of a jade green for the the trim. Looks very nice. And I love the expression as well. You've uh, captured on the face there, Josh. It's kind of like, what? That I really hit it? <laughs> I can't believe it. <laughs> there was a certain level of surprise there. And yeah. Nice work, Josh. Good one. Oh, JT has painted Adult Intruders from the Nemesis board game. Ooh. These are very interesting. Very interesting. What's going on here? Is that, um, it looks like it's sort of walking past a piece of machinery or something. I can't quite tell if that's a, a sword blade. But it also looks like there's a, a glow, like a yellow glow coming from the side yeah. of the miniature. Like off camera almost. Like it's almost like machinery because you have <clears> the <throat> metal at the bottom or something. Like Yep. There's like a forge glow yeah. somewhere. But yeah, these are looking really nice. Really gruesome kind of combination of colors there. That purple and the, the 
dark blood red. It's really nice. Excellent work, JT. That looked great. Very creepy. Oh, um. Cool. Did you see the OSL firelight effect? Is from the ship burning around them. Oh, right. Very cool. Ooh. That's nice. That's what's going on right there. Gotcha. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just going to jump into the chat for a second. Um, yep. When I mentioned that I didn't know about uh, Arakura and uh, the Iron, and Iron Defenders, um, I didn't grow in the, in the 70s, 80s America watching cartoons. No, I came to America much later. Yeah. So they had their own Saturday morning cartoon. There we go. Uh, and Jason is glad that I didn't reach to sip the paint water. <laughs> no, I wasn't going to do that. It's been a long time since I've done that. <laughs> and some key said about those, the sloppy Dubai applied for and so on. Uh, they are the heralds of Nogal rather than the heralds. <laughs> Very cool. Um, yeah, JT says the Rex parts of the ship. And when we were talking about the, the garden, uh, yes. Gardens of Nurgle. Uh, James pointed out that there's a garden in England that's growing the most poisonous plants in the world. I've seen, uh, I've seen advertisements. I've seen that, that in a show. Yep, definitely. Oh, um, <laughs> Joe says, uh, -huh, thanks. Got him just in time to see his, uh, his mini. And he says the surprise is because maybe he tagged one of Gretchen's zombies. <laughs> Quite possibly. But yeah, looking good. But moving back to the minis, uh, Liam Myers, Cursed City Skeletons. Fun little models. These are fun little models. And I think uh, Liam's done a great job here. Very I like the... how, I don't want to say vibrant the colors are, um, but how, how deep they are, how yeah, I would have rich, said how rich, rich they are. They are. There's a good word for it. In combination of vibrant and deep. Yeah. Rich. Good word. Yeah. Definitely, yeah, that's, that's what I was going to say as well. I was also going to stumble around until I came across the word rich, but Gretchen got there before I did. That's because we're so good at words today. All, all the words. Yeah. All the best Eventually words. Eventually we'll get them all down. Yeah. We will. You like but, winning Scrabble. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I love the work that, uh, that Liam's done here. They look uh, awesome. And of course, I sort of particular to uh, some of those robes there. They've got that um, dark sea blue or... Mm -hmm. um, Chaos, uh, not chaos, like coal black kind of look to them. But yeah, beautiful. I'm painting up some of these at the moment myself, but uh, not right now, of course. But my the other me. He's secretly painting it. a mini under the table while he's painting a mini. Of just just with one hand, <laughs> with my left hand, this one. But uh, yep, beautiful work there, Liam. Yeah, the the rest of you guys are going to look awesome too. Nicely done. Sorry. No worries. Here we go. Excellent. Uh, Drew from One Inch Heroes has painted up a Bellacore, which is awesome. There's so many little chains and skeletons, and it looks amazing, but all I can think is how tedious that must have been to paint. Paint all those chains and skulls? Yes. Yeah. Well, the great thing is you can paint all of those chains and skulls separate from the wings. So if you don't want to put them on, you don't have to. That is true. Uh, and it, it does make it all a little bit easier to paint, for sure. But yeah, there's so much, so much going on there. But this mini is huge as well. You stand like to the top of his horns. There is probably the height of the the frost giant. Wow. But yeah, it's really nice. And this mini um, has been done for both Warhammer Forty Thousand and Age of Sigma. So. Um, the 40,000 version has that Space Marine on there, and the Age of Sigma version, I can't remember what it has, but it, I think it has the Stormcast Eternal on there. But uh, but yeah, Drew's done a great job here. Got all that wonderful detail. Love that little pop of blue on the tongue there. Yeah, yep. He's got a, a, like a nice sort of circle going around there, or an ellipse, mm -hmm. where it's the, the pop of blue on the tongue, there's the blue helmet, there's the blue space marine and there's the blue in the uh, sword. So your eye sort of moves around the model there. But yeah, very nicely done. Great work. 
Excellent. Well, Roger, you still with us, Roger? I think you are. Uh, the Chinese warriors from Monumental. These are looking quite cool. I like that little bit of this. It looks like a little hint of purple there on the armor, on the scale. Yeah, very nice. I love those pole arms as well. Looking very good. It's like a little uh, dragon they're almost head. Almost in like a formation. Hmm? <laughs> so they're almost in like little formation, formation in yep. the photo. It kind of it feels like uh, the one in the middle there is gone. You two with me. You three on the left flank. Hey. You are the three. Fall off in the middle. Like they're, gonna... they're gonna spread out. Yeah. Form a little box. But yeah, looking very nice. Roger says, I have a couple more done, but I'm not taking the picks. But yeah, looking very cool there, Roger. Must be almost done. Almost finished. That task. Sorry, Sam, can I jump in here? The task has been monumental. <laughs> Excellent. Oh, okay. Uh, Sebastian uh, has painted up a squad of Bulgren pro proxies. These look very cool. These are from uh, from a German company called Mortian Tank, and uh, they look very nice. So these are sort of ogre-sized models, um, wielding enormous entrenching tools, <laughs> which is pretty cool. But yeah, very nice. I love that um, that sort of dark iron armor there. A little bit of rusting going on. Um, but yeah, very cool. That uh, the the white sort of look on the uh, gas mask of that, that sort of canvas feel, waxed canvas feel from the uh, World War One gas mask. But uh, yeah, beautiful work, Sebastian. They look great. Very nice. Oh, Seth is working on She Hulk, the Marvel Crisis Protocol. One of the things I really love that, that Seth has done on. Um, this is worked uh, that purple into the shading for the green. Very nice That's and cohesive. Hmm? So yeah. it's very cohesive. Yep. Just uh, bring it all together. Definitely. I think it also gives it an, a, a soft kind of look. Um, not pastel, but very the way everything flows together makes it very... Um, I don't know how to describe it other than soft. <laughs> right. No, I think it soft is, is, is fair. In a good way. <laughs> it's, it's not... Um, you're, getting, you're getting the pop and you're getting the depth and the volumes there, but it's not in a harsh way. It's yeah. Got that, yeah. And it still has like a vaguely feminine air to it, like which I appreciate sure. for She-Hulk, because yeah. a lot of times people just focus on Arr, muscles, and here she still looks muscly, but she also like that, that shade of purple is very, it's very nice, very dainty. Right. Cool. No, I agree. Nice work, Seth. Looks very cool. Pop a little bit more water. Ah, Sean has moved on to his Lumineth shrine. So this is a kind of a crazy, really crazy miniature. Got that shrine there on a floating rock island that has a spring in it Ooh. that's pumping sort of water out and it's that the waterfall is the are the pieces that are holding up the island like the, the on the miniature they're physically holding it up so it's very um very wild terrain piece but really nicely done so it's coming along uh very nicely there sean i noticed uh on the floor there you painted uh, the colors that appear on your your shields um, and your banners. Also, Great really sort of like the uh, the rainbow reflected in the waterfall. Right. That's a really nice touch. Nice. Yeah. Well spotted there. No, looking great, Sean. Nice one. Oh, someone can give me a slow clap for the monu for the monumental pun. Thank you. Uh, Simon uh, has painted up this very cool uh, model. I think this might be from one of the Warhammer Underworlds 
um, kits. I could be wrong. But uh, a great little uh, sort of fawn, satyr kind of look. But uh, yeah, looking great. I love the um, the green glow in the eyes and in the um, sort of the gem in the center there. I think it works nicely in that sort of cascade of armor plates. Yeah. Down there. They look really cool. Very nice. Um, nice contrast on all the highlighting, really. Works on the like the fur on the thighs. Yeah. As well as looking great. Nice work, Simon. That looks cool. Excellent. Last one. Last one. Wyatt. My blood ravens. Ooh. Oh, these acquisitions. Hmm. I think, um, yeah, so this is a. Where is this from? I'm trying to pick the miniature. <laughs> Initially, I was thinking it might be a, a Primaris Marine because it looks a little bit like a, um, a new Assault Intercessors, but it's not. It's, an, it's a Firstborn Marine. So it's looking very cool. But that. Uh, that sword, I don't recognize the sword. I must have picked it up from somewhere. But no, looking nice. Coming along well there, uh, Wyatt. I think I, I'm liking the, um, like the rope across the chest there is looking, uh, looking really neat. And the, uh, and the patergias. <laughs> Those are the leather straps that hang down from the belt. Patergias. Patergias. Yep. Spelt just like it sounds. <laughs> but no, nice work, right? Uh, Wyatt. Looking great. Very cool. Excellent. Thank you oh. to everyone who posted. Oh, yes. Dave Pumbles just pointed out that uh, the Wyatt has a an Ultramarine sword there. He picked it up from somewhere. But no, very good. But yes, as Leona said, thank you very much, everybody, for uh, sending those in or posting them in the group. Um, so a lot of these were basically all provided. Uh, I think Leona will be popping a link to the form into the chat Yep. Uh, in a few minutes. If Restream uh, will work. <laughs> pardon? If I'm Restream trying, will work. But Restream isn't working, so I'll, I'll get it. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, but uh, so yeah, so we have a, uh, a link to a form where you can submit photos uh, along with uh, information that uh, Leona can pop up on the screen uh, just in case we don't recognize the minis. Uh, and also you can join our Facebook group, which is uh, on Facebook called Painting Happy Little Minis uh, and post your work there, be it work in progress, be it finished pieces. You can ask questions, you can offer advice to other folks who have asked questions. Um, so yeah, lots of cool Join stuff. Join the community. Do Join. the things. Learn stuff. Hit Help the other like. people. Yeah, hit the like. Help other people learn things. It's a, it's a whole, it's a whole party. It is. Oh my so goodness. I guess, I'll, I guess I'll show actually what I'm, what I've been doing. That's looking really cool. Yeah. So I'm mm -hmm. adding a bunch of fun, kind of spots. I, I want it to look very. Uh, I say natural as I talk about this <laughs> green and orange lizard. Uh, but um, Green organic. and orange, enormous lizard. <laughs> yes. Uh, but I want it to look very organic. Um, I, I like when that happens. Um, I like when things have an air of that. Um, it's kind of reminded me a, bit, a little bit of a, like a Gila monster right now with that. Um, right. <laughs> So I'm going to go through and I'm basically just going to keep adding a little bit more dimension to these and giving them some love and attention so that uh, I can get a large chunk of him done. Um, cool. But yeah. That nice bright orange. Do you think he uses them to ward off predators or attract a mate? Uh, yes. All of the above. <laughs> Isn't that how it works? Y yeah. I'm not sure. It works well enough for peacocks. 
they use it for both? Yep. Use their, uh, their feathers for both? Cool. I do just have to say that I'm not sure whether it's the dark sea blue <laughs> or the olive green. Olive gray, sorry. Uh, but one of them tastes terrible. So it's been around there. So I've started work on the uh, on the shorts. So this is just a uh, like a 50-50 mix of the of the two. Um, the next one will be going up to a like a straight highlight of the uh, olive gray, and I guess at that point I'll find out if it's that's the one that tastes terrible. Um, maybe it's just the combination of the two, the mix of the two tastes terrible. But uh, yeah, once I've done the olive gray highlight, then I'm gonna mix in a little bit of ivory and start working with a finer brush and start adding in texture for the, the highlights. <laughs> so that I can get it to. Curry says, kind of has a heat look, thanks. Now I know how to paint my remora back spines. It, right. I have been like looking at it going, this has a vague lava lamp. <laughs> kind of feel, but, right? <laughs> um, but... Well, you wanted that, uh, yeah. like that 90s, 80s, 90s look. Yeah. yeah. I'm okay with that. Um, Fantastic. Okay. I just realized as well, I could get in and do the, um, paint the her helmet at the same time. So she has a, uh, a camo net over the top of the helmet, but because of the scale, you can actually see the helmet paint through the the camo net. So I'm going to have to paint that first, then come back and um, once that's all done, then I can paint in the the camo net again. So it'll be a little bit of extra work, but as long as I plan the time for it, we should be good. I can't believe it's 8.41 already. Oh, wow. Time flies when you're having a coughing fit. <laughs> sure does, Dave. Thank you for your patience. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> 70s lava lamp with a 60s groovy vibe. Yep. I had a lava lamp. I had no, not a lava lamp. I had a glitter lamp. That's what it was. It was like purple. I think I got it for Christmas or something one year. And thus started my obsession with glitter. It's the, the dark sea blue is the one that tastes terrible. <laughs> Where is it? There we go. Dark sea blue, great color, terrible taste. Right. Yep. Uh, oh, Jason asks, what size mini do you prefer to paint? The small ones with the one inch bases or these larger types? I actually like the larger ones because I can add more detail. Um, I don't like that they take me longer, but I do like that I can do things like speckling and... Yep. Um, like, especially on things like dragons or dinosaurs or stuff. I really like... Um, if I, if I had, like, all the time in the world, I'd probably look up some patterns from different creatures and try to incorporate those. Right. That's cool. I, uh, I enjoy both. Um, I've probably painted a lot more, like, human-sized 28mm miniatures. Um mainly because I'm usually painting for armies for gaming that kind of thing but uh, yeah I do I do like painting a mix a mix of them I couldn't say which one's my favorite it boring one way or another yeah if you get sort of fixed and you only do one one of one or the other yeah for sure there we go but sometimes I like a good challenge when we've had teeny tiny ones. I feel like you surprise yourself, like the the firefly ones. Okay. Yep. 
I feel like those ended up turning out very well. They did. Yeah. And that was with, you know, minimal ability to do detail. <laughs> <laughs> you really had to pick and choose which detail was going to make you go, uh-huh. Ah, uh -huh, that's the one. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So there we go, just coming along there. There's some great uh, great detail in the sculpts. Look at these. These are really nice. I think at some point I need to... Um... <laughs> Sorry, the copy says tape to circle, circle back to the beginning of the show. This is more akin to reality TV as we watched you brave through the coughing fit. <laughs> Sure, but uh, yeah, they've got some great, um, some great details, some really nice uh, folds in the fabric there. Um, but now it's time to add in a little bit more, uh, or a little bit of ivory there. Oh, I'm just going to slide that this way. There we go. So you can see there, just adding in, and then I'm going to. Get some of those uh, basically spots along the top of her thigh there. She has that pocket there, so I don't want to take it too too far towards that ivory. So I'm just going to run that along the edges there, so you can see it start to pick up. Um, Maybe down here. That top there, and then some of those folds. And then same sort of thing over here. I'm just gonna pick a spot and run that down that line so that I can then work that out with some of the when I say work it out, I mean um, spread that out by mixing in some more of the olive grey. So it gives that that highlight look, but because of the the angle of the brush strokes, um, it gives it start giving a, a little bit of uh, uh, fabric texture. There. And just cut. Nope, sorry. There we go. Just catch the top of the the butt there, and then down on the the back of her thigh there. So. And then while I've got some of that over in there, I'll just hit the, the helmet up there as well. Looks a little bit odd at the moment, but once I go back with the, and paint over that uh, camo netting, that'll start to disappear. I think she's looking very fierce. I think she is looking great. Yeah. She's ready to take this uh, radio antenna and brain your uh, pterosaur. Pterosaurus. Whatever it's called. Okay. So the, that looking good. A little bit of... I'm just going to pick out a few uh, quick little highlights. Different areas. There. And then come in with the... Um, fine brush and start working on mixing some more of that ivory into the olive grey you can see that there and then now I'm going to work across so if the the, um, the line of the highlighting would normally go that direction. I'm going to cut across it with little little hash marks there on the highlight to start to give it that um, like a little fabric texture there. Because it's such a large miniature, 
you can uh, you've got the opportunity to do that in any of these sort of models with clothes and there are, in this range there are a lot of monsters and a lot of um, uh, mechs I'm not sure how many models have like oversized shorts <laughs> Which begs the question, like, did this model, did Sergeant Titanica start as, like, a human size model in the game, which would be, like, tiny? And then she went through, like, an enlarging ray? That's a good question. Or was she always this big and they actually made pants and a helmet and Hawaiian shirt for her? You're asking, the, you're asking Everyone, the big questions here, Dave. I am asking the big questions. What does everybody think? Um, yes, yeah, so it does look like she's wearing 50 cal ammo. Although at this scale, that would be more, it'd be more like... Um, that would mean they also specifically scaled up ammo. <laughs> <laughs> ammo for, yeah. It does look more like, uh, it'd be like 37 mil or something like that. 37 mil, 80 tank rounds. But, yeah, back to painting some texture. Not sure if it's gonna, is it gonna pick up on the, oh yeah. So you can see some tiny hash marks there on the, the camera, which is good. You can just hit those, along some of those highlight edges where you might expect that it, the um, the fabric would wear a little bit more, and you get that. Um, basically, the dye, I guess, the dye rubbing off or coming out of it. And I'll do that along the the bottom edges of the the shorts as well, because they're very definitely tattered. This texture will just help that out. So when we're talking about a um, putting a Hawaiian shirt sort of pattern on her, on her shirt, should we go for a light shirt with a darker pattern? I'm thinking something like a a blue, like a very pale blue with a like orange hibiscus Ooh. kind of look, or should we go with the darker base color for the shirt and um, brighter? colors on it. Kind of like they did the brighter colors. I mean, she's wearing so many dark things. Yeah. We'll do that then. I might have to take her home and do a little bit of work on her in between. This was that, <laughs> <laughs> that uh, shirt is going to take forever. But if I can get the boots and the the gaiters that she's got wearing and the little tank on the base that she's standing on, and get those done. I mean, we can focus on doing a really neat sort of finish up job next week. <laughs> there we go. So how are those looking? They're looking you okay? Oh, very nice. I think it's, yeah, it's been fun to uh, nice. experiment with it. I think really enjoying messing around with the volumes. When we had Jeff on a couple of weeks ago, um, right. Jeff Jenkins, he was talking about the volumes that he was painting on the miniature. And I'm kind of focusing on them on particular areas rather than it being an overall look, but it's nice to mess around with that. So. Just catch to a little bit of dotting on the, um, which is another thing. So doing that stippling is another way you can add texture to, to fabrics. And I think uh, the piece that Jeff was working on, he did that on his, um, on the white fabric. Just built it up from, from that warm gray 
with different layers of stippling. I'm not going to do too many layers on here though. It's could be crazy, but yeah, looking pretty good. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, the coffee house is given her size. They could be 302 rounds. It could be. Uh, Jason says, just Google search Magnum PI, and the options are endless. Uh, the coffee house is painted like Wash from Firefly. <laughs> you put little dinos on it to match with Gretchen's minis. Uh, mini, that could be. Well, that could be fun. I would be really impressed if you got that. So I was able to paint tiny little dinosaurs yeah. that look like that one. How funny would that be? That'd be that'd yeah. be so so funny, and I'd be so impressed. Excellent. Uh, Brontonaut says, I know a guy with a blue shirt and red D20s on it. Hmm, I wonder who that could be. But yeah, excellent. Uh, and Ayumi says, uh, definitely trying to see the finishing touches on these models. I'm finishing up on a commission and excited to get it done. Definitely make sure you post some of the pics of it in um, in the group this week so that we can show them on the, uh, or send them to the, the form that uh, Leona linked to earlier. So we can show them uh, on the show next week. That'll be good. Show them on the show. We can feature them. Feature them on the show. That's also important. Yeah. That would be good. So you can see those. I think I'm going to go with... What should here? I'm going to go with... Um, I'm going to go with brown for the gators. And here they've gone with the same color as her um, fatigues. That green. I think I'm going to go with brown and go with brown um, webbing as well. Just to break it up a little bit. Actually, knowing that Ayumi is in the in the chat there, what color should I paint the uh, little tank on the base that she's standing on? What color should I paint that? Let me know. So many polka dots. Pardon? I said so many polka dots. So many polka dots? You're saying that I should paint the tank polka dots or you're doing all of your, your patterning over there? I'm doing so many polka dots, <laughs> but if you would like to paint the tank polka dots, I think that would be, that'd be lovely. That'd be amazing. You can't, like from this direction, you just see like orange. But if I turn it this way, you can see that uh, oh, yeah. that speckling is starting to look really nice. Um, that looks great. I mean, it looked awesome the first time you showed us. So. Yeah. There's so much more depth there, though, now. It looks wild. It looks like um, embers. Oh, true. That's very neat. Cool. Um, Oh, Dave almost said two point. Uh, the uh, ammo was two pointed to be three or two rounds. Sorry, look up here. <laughs> uh, JT, got to run. See you next week. See you next week. Excellent. Um, and the other says, hmm, "Am I aiming for realistic or colorful? Either, either." <laughs> uh, James is suggesting a desalter pink. Coffee says the tank would pop if you did Battleship Grey. Because hmm. you could Possibly. do like an imaginary opponent, right? Yeah. Like yep. that's what I'm thinking. And a lot of times those little guys can be super color colorful. Yeah. You could do like a tank girl kind of look. Oh, well, that'd be cool. Okay, there you person. go. I don't know, but tank girl tank, Magnum PI shirt. <laughs> it's a lot. It's, it's, it's getting, called fashion, Dave. It's getting to be there. Fashion. Yeah, it's getting to be a lot. It's called fashion. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Maybe do that. Let's think about it. Yeah. 
maybe I think it's some color that uh, has a connection to the color that I put into the shirt. Ooh. Yeah. Just to link it. But um, so that means I have to decide on the pattern of the shirt first. It should be okay. I can do that. I think it's also then that I'll determine what color her hair is going to be. Because she's got a lot of it up there. And it needs to balance with that shirt. And this is the tough point as well. Part of me wants to um, paint the the bandolier sort of thing um, in brown. But I'm thinking I should paint it black. Kind of pretend that it's clips. So the whole thing is it is just a belt feed rather than a, a bandolier. So so many decisions. We are coming to the end nope. of the show now. So you want to kind of showcase what you've done and then we can yeah. kind of wrap it up. Sure. We can do that. We can do that. There she if is. it wasn't for Leona, we would just paint all through the night. Yep. And I'd be like, really? We've been here a week already? <laughs> I need some more water. Dave, <laughs> since you're ready, let's jump to you first. Yep. Okay. So I'm going to keep moving this around so everybody gets sick. Nope. Okay. <laughs> so I'm, I've been working on Sergeant Titanica. Or at least my own version of her. Uh, from the Protectors range for Monster Apocalypse. From? Where's the Private Here Press logo? It's on here somewhere. There it is. Hmm? Right there. Oh, there it yep. is. Tiny, just above Sergeant Titanica there. Itty bitty. Excellent. And this is how she's coming along. Nice. That's been very nice. Lava Painter said the Destroyers have a faction called Ubercore International, and their studio scheme is white, red, and black with bronze. Okay. So you could do something like bronze that. Bronze metal accents, yeah. I feel like I must have seen that studio pin paint because I was thinking blue and red right. for the tank. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Cool. But yeah, I, that's look, I looking go with that. really yeah. good, Dave. Because I think, yeah, a white, like white, a, like mostly white tank would stand out with the red and the black. I'll have to go. I'll go and have a look. I'll check out Ubercorp International. Um, but yeah. Neat. Okay. That's how she's coming along. Cool. Hooray. Sweet. All right. So this is the Pterosaurus, and this is his little card. He was much more like earthy color themed, um, but I don't follow the rules. So, <laughs> um, so this is how he's coming along. Um, I got that base green kind of slapped down there haphazard, and I spent most of the time really kind of working on that stippling textured kind of um, effect with the orange. Kind of reminds me of orange soda. There's almost a, there's a bubbling kind of feel, but there's also a, like an oil drop kind of uh, yeah. thing going on. Yeah, so that's really... gonna that's gonna go all the way down on those plates and I'll probably do it on the base of those horns, um, but okay. not have it too, too busy. What color are you thinking of having the horns, the primary color of the horns? Um, I don't know if I want to do them orange or if I want to do more yellow, um, mm -hmm. since do, the... Do you mind if I... Oh. I I'm going to say black. Keep them black? I'm going to say, yeah, yeah like them paint them black. black, and then if you have that orange coming up, like oh. the orange stippling going up the horns. Yeah, yeah. But that black is is working really nicely against that. It's, fr it's framing that Why orange. Why is it blurry? Because I, I move things. I don't... There we go. Oh. Because I mess up the focus of everything. <laughs> unfocused in life, unfocused on the screen. On the yeah, it, Is that how that works? Maybe. Well, it's weird. It's almost like the camera focused itself. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Now okay. you can really see all of it. <laughs> really? Yeah. See? 
Uh, someone said Fanta, Fanta colored. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. But yeah, and then kind of um, gonna work from that more bluey green to a little bit more of a greeny green. Um, yep. And I think it's gonna end up looking really cool. So yes. I am excited to see how this turns out in the end. Yep. Very cool. And Ashley Coffee, I said she gretchened it. <laughs> you did. It's looking awesome. I needed bolder, brighter, more. More speckled. More speckled. More texture. Yeah. More glitter. <laughs> Maybe. More! <I> don't know. <laughs> Oh! <laughs> There's some shifters over there. Just make it this. You know, <laughs> they have that whole thing with minimalism, and then I forget what the opposite is called. Maximalism. Max Maximalism. That's what we're doing. Is that actually a thing? Is that the name? Of it? I I think so. Maxi it is now. Maximalism. At least yeah. my sister. Leona said it confidently. So I, I would have said Gretchenalism. <laughs> Which is funny because my house is not that at all. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Um, That's cool. But yeah, so okay. we, we will go. finish these up next week. We will. So exciting. Two weeks. Two weeks. Two week minis. Two week minis. But yes. Thank you very much to uh, Vallejo for sponsoring yes. the show tonight. Providing yeah. all these lovely colors for us yeah. to work with. That's why that's that used the real reason why I use all the colors. Right. <laughs> so they'll send you more? Yes. <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> cool. um, but yeah, we will see you guys next week. Make sure that you join the Facebook page. If you have not already joined the Facebook page, it is Painting Happy Little Minis. Sorry. Type it in, press the button, and one of us will add you. And then you can post it up pictures. And then your pictures can be on the show. It's a whole... It's a whole it's ecosystem, a whole really. Yeah. <laughs> and you have to be in it to win it. Exactly. Not that there, is, there are prizes, but there aren't always prizes. <laughs> sometimes winning is just the kudos you receive. Some, sometimes winning is just the friends we made along the way. This is true. This is true. <laughs> and on that note, good night. <laughs> Bye.